Well, good morning, everyone. This, of course, is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is the day that we are giving thanks unto the Lord. Uh, you know, the uh, one scripture says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Welcome, Frankie. Praise God. God bless you this morning. Welcome, Mary. Welcome, my wife, Beverly. Praise God. Welcome, Cheryl. God bless you all. The Lord is good. Praise God. And his mercy, hallelujah, is enduring forever. That means today is one of those forevers. Amen. God bless you, Brother Joe. Welcome this morning. Good morning, man of God. Good to have you with us this morning. Uh, great things are planned for today. Of course, God always has great things plans for us you know because you know why he says in the book of jeremiah i know the plans i have for you and they are plans for good and not for evil praise god to give you an expected end god's got an expected end for your day to day amen and that expected end is a great day glory to god remember years ago some of you might have been not might not have been born but uh this your old kellogg's uh commercial for the uh the um I think it was a lion or whatever it was. Said, How's it going to be? It's going to be great today. <laughs> Glory to God. And I want you to know that we can put a lot of R's on that today. That God is a great God. Hallelujah. And he does great things. Glory to God. And, and the Bible talks about that all over the scriptures. The scriptures how, how many great things the Lord will do. I think the one, one scripture says that, that God will do great and mighty things. Amen. Yeah, that you know not of. God bless you, Melba. Welcome today. We'll spend another 30 seconds waiting on everybody to get on. And then we're going to get started today, praise God. But welcome all of you that are coming on as you're coming on, praise God. The Lord is good. Isn't it, a, isn't it wonderful to have a medium like this where we can come together like this, praise God, in unity together? Bless you, Lucy. Welcome this morning, praise God. Bless you, Montoya. Welcome this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. The Lord is good. This is a good time of prayer, amen? God bless you, Laura. Welcome. Welcome this morning. Praise God to our time of prayer, our time of getting into the Word of God, our time of just doing like Jesus did. The Bible says in the book of St. Mark, chapter 1, verse 5, 5, it said, Jesus Christ rose up early before day, went into his solitary place, and there he prayed. So Jesus understood the importance of how to start his day off. Amen. Bless you, Shirley. Uh, Shelby, praise God. Welcome today to our, to our time of getting into the Word of God. Now, I would like for each of you that you're coming on today to go ahead and share this with your friends. You know, just on, we're on Facebook right now. Share with your friends. Let them know that we're on the air right now and we're live and we get into the Word of God. Praise God and encourage them to get on with us. Amen. Because the more we can get, the more power that we can experience together praise God now let's get ready to get started again uh, we're talking about prayer and we're and, 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 and today since we tomorrow uh, uh, depending on when you're listening to this but when we're actually doing this today it's actually uh, one day before Thanksgiving and so I got to thinking about this that you know that you know that it's a time of the year where people are beginning to think about thanking God amen because you know sometimes Things are not as bad as it seems. I, I heard that word in my spirit this morning. You know what? Things are not as bad as it seems. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes we're just looking at the wrong thing. Sometimes we're looking at what we don't have instead of being thankful for what we do have. In other words, one man, what, what scripture, not the scripture said, but one man said, I, I complained about not having a hand. Until I seen a man with no feet. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. In other words, sometimes you can get we can come we can become blinded to the great things God has done in our lives. Amen. By uh, by not looking at what He's done and by looking at what He has not done or what we can't see that He's done. And that's why today let's take some time to to thank the Lord. Let's take some time to thank God for what He has done in our lives. Amen. And praise God. God bless you, Gabriel. Welcome, man of God. Welcome, woman of God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, uh, Stephanie, God bless you, Stephanie. Welcome to, uh, to our time this morning. Now, we're going to start this morning again thanking God for what He has already done. And one thing Jesus has done, glory to God, He's made a way for us to enter into the presence of Almighty God 
without condemnation, without guilt, without fear. You know, I was being when I first got raised up in church. You know, we always had to come and 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 almost every service we had to try to repent and feel bad for ourselves like that. In other words, you know, like you got to go through all this before you get to God. But I'm going to show you today. We can thank God for what He has done. Glory to God. And 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 I want you to see something here as you open your Bibles with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter four and verse sixteen. Hebrews, God bless you, Celeste. Praise God. Welcome today. Praise God. Uh, uh, I want you to go into the book of uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16. And let's look at this for a moment. Because if we look at this, we're going to begin to start seeing that, that God has already done some things. That a lot of times we're coming to God based upon what we've done instead of what he did. Glory to God, are you following me? And Jesus has already made a way for everything we've already done. No matter what you've done in your life, no matter how many mistakes you've made, no matter how many failures you went through, I want you to know that Jesus Christ has already paid the price for that. And it's not necessary for you to go through a lot of the unnecessary changes trying to make yourself worthy again for God to accept you. Notice what he says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let's read that together. Let us therefore, glory to God, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Can you see that this morning? He says, don't come to God with this, con con this, this sense of condemnation. Don't come to God with this sense of guilt. Don't come to God with this sense of inferiority like you're so unworthy. He said, no, let's think about the blood of Jesus Christ and what he's already paid, what he's already paid, what he's already paid, what he's already done. Amen. He said, because of Jesus, you and I can come boldly. Glory to God. Amen. Into the very throne room of God. You know, in the Old Testament, because they did not, they couldn't come boldly. They have to go through all these different sacrifices. Are you following in order to get into God's presence? And, and even, and, but only it, it, when it comes to the Holy of Holies, only the high priest would go in then. And he, and he had to go in, they said, with a bell on his feet just in, and a rope just in case he had some sin in his life because you could not go into that holy place with sin. And so they was very sensitive <laughs> that not everybody even tried to go in there, amen? But the Bible says to because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you and I now don't need, it, don't need a rope around us. You and I don't need all the different sacrifices they made in the Old Testament. The Bible said Jesus Christ, by one sacrifice, glory to God, made an eternal redemption for you. That means he's not going he's not to make another one. The one sacrifice he made was enough to allow you and I to come boldly to the throne of grace. And we can find mercy, glory to God, and help in our time of need. It's like, praise God, you know, what, what is mercy, Pastor Craig? Mercy is when you don't get what you do deserve, amen? That means that you, you get stopped by a policeman, you deserve a ticket, but he decides to show you mercy. You, he's not telling you you were not guilty. He, it, was, it was in his power to give you mercy. And that's what God is saying today, is that God's got mercy abundantly. Glory to God. It's not because you and I have not been guilty of some things, are you following? But his mercy, glory to God, that given us what uh, not giving us what we do deserve. Well, you said, Pastor, what is grace? Grace is when we don't, is, is when we get what we don't deserve. So grace is when we get what we don't deserve. And mercy is when we don't get what we do deserve. Are you following me? And the Bible says that the throne of grace, we can find grace and mercy in our time of need. Glory to God. And so if you're feeling guilty because of something you've done in your past, come on in. Praise God. Because at the throne of God, you ain't got to go through a lot of the religious things that people try to put you through when you've made mistakes. No, you can come boldly because at the throne, at the throne is mercy. At the throne is grace. You know, one time I remember years ago, it's been years ago, I said, you know, we all sin, we do some things we know ain't right, are you following me? And I remember that next morning, I'm trying to get back in God's presence again, and there's nothing like when you've known God's presence, and all of a sudden it seemed like because of things that you've been through, a mistake that you made, something you said or did, you know it wasn't the will of God, but you did it anyway. You're feeling guilty, having a hard time getting back in God's presence again. And I was having that challenge, because at that time, my prayer room was my bathroom, are you following me? I'm in the bathroom, and I can't get through. 
And I never forget, you know, uh, 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 the devil tell me you you done missed it. You're not going to never get to where you were and things like that. And, you know, I, and I was believing it because, man, that thing was hitting me hard. Condemnation, guilt was all hitting me hard. And But I never forget, uh, I, uh, as I got to, got to the extreme darkness and condemnation at that time of prayer, I said, devil, you may be right. I may not ever be everything God wants me to be. I may not do everything God like, designed for me to do. I said, but this one thing I want you to know this morning, I'm still not going to serve you. Glory to God. And it was amazing to me. It was amazing. The moment I made the decision that I'm still not going to serve you, Satan, it was like the presence of God came. And I don't know if you've been around those places that, that in, in malls that got those mists that come down the mist. It was like the mist and the presence of God came in, 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 in that bathroom with me and the presence of God filled that place and, and this one then the Lord spoke to my heart he said look you are my child and your condition did not change your position glory to God isn't that beautiful amen even though my condition had changed my position had not changed he reminded me of the prodigal son even though the prodigal son had went out and done some things he never should have done and he said while he was in the pig pen he said, he said how many servants of my father's I, I, I have something to eat, and I'm, I'm perishing with hunger, and I'm a son. He said, I'm going to go back home. I'm going to tell my father I've missed it. Are you fine? I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me as one of your higher servants. In other words, I'm willing to be demoted. I'm willing to not be and do it that you want me to do. But he said, but when he got there, when he got there, he said the father saw him from afar. And when the father saw him from afar, the Bible said the father ran. Glory to God. And he hadn't had a chance to go to stop by and, get, and, and take a shower. He said the father ran to him and ki hugged him and kissed him. Oh, my God. The father identified with, with him in his condition. Are you following me? And then the son said, Father, I'm, I feel so guilty for what I've done in my life. I feel so bad. I feel so condemned. Uh, and, and I'm not even worthy to call your son no more. Maybe one of your higher servants. The father, didn't even, he, the father did not even entertain that conversation. The Bible called the servants as servants, uh, uh, go kill the fatty calf and, and bring my ring and put it on his finger, put sh new shoes on his feet and give him a brand new robe. For this is, this is not my servant, not my sinner. This is my son. Glory to God. And let us rejoice. He was dead. And is alive again. God said, I'm not thinking about what you've done. Because what you did did not change your position. Your condition, you've been the hog pen. Your condition, yes, you waste a lot of your things on riotous living. Yes, you went into sin for a while. But it never changed the fact that you're my son. Mm. He said, service, this is my son. And God told me, he said, from this point on, when you come before me, I don't care how guilty you may feel. You come as my child. You come as my son. Because your condition has not changed your position. And all of a sudden, the refreshing of the presence of God came on me. And I've been understanding that ever since then that I can come boldly to the throne of grace. Because it is at his throne that you find the grace. It is at his throne that you obtain the mercy. In your time of need. And the devil tried to keep us away from that. He said, you can't go before God like that. But no, God has provided a way for us to come boldly. Notice in the book of uh, Hebrews now. Go me in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10 and verse number 19. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 19. And let's read that together. Okay, you ready? Let's read it together. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. To enter into the holiest, how? By the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you see that? Having therefore, because of Jesus, because of his blood that he shed 2,000 years ago, we can come boldly. We can come boldly. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, not through the outer gates anymore. Not through the place where you have to go through all those sacrifices. But the sacrifice has been made now. And now you and I can enter into the holy place where the high priest entered into. Where, where nobody could go in there with sin in their lives. But now he's saying you and I can enter in with boldness into the very holy of holies now. Glory to God. Isn't that beautiful? How? By the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus 
the price that was paid for our sins. That's why the book of Romans chapter 8 says, There is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. To them that walk not the flesh, but after the Spirit of God. And you are in Christ now. And so, yes, we make mistakes. Yes, we do things we should not have done, not purposely. Sometimes temptation hits us and we find ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time and saying the wrong thing and doing the wrong thing and we feel so guilty. But let me tell you something. We can come back boldly. We can enter back in boldly. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ that 2,000 years ago, his blood was shed for your sins and my sin, past present and future. Glory to God. And the Bible says Jesus Christ ever lives to make intercession for us in the name of Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? So notice here again in verse 19, Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Verse 20 says, by a new and living way, not that old way, all those sacrifices that we had to make, that they had to make back in the old days. He said, but by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Through his body that was broken for us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was on him. And by his stripes, glory to God, we're healed. So he's made a new and a living way. For us to enter in to the very holiest of God by the blood of Jesus. We're talking about giving God thanks today. We're talking about giving God thanks for what he's done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. See, uh, see, faith is acting on what God has done, not what Satan is doing. Mm. So again, faith is acting on what God has done, not what Satan is doing. So let me say this. Faith also... Is acting on what God has already said, not what the devil is saying. In other words, the devil may be saying one thing to you, but God has said something else. Glory to God. The devil may say, you're condemned, you're guilty. God says, no, you're forgiven. Hallelujah, that beautiful. See, uh, n notice in the book of Hebrews, while we're there in Hebrews, chapter number 10 and verse number 22, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22, look what it says there. It says, let us draw near. Glory to God with a true heart in full assurance of faith. This it is now having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with God's pure water. Hallelujah. That's how I felt that day when I was in my bathroom. Because it, the devil was washing me with, with water of condemnation, the water of guilt. The water, the water of insecurity, the water of I'm not, yo, know, I'm not worthy. But then Jesus came with those mists and began to wash me with his pure water. Glory to God. And every morning we have the privilege of allowing the blood of Jesus and the waters, the washing of water by the word of God to wash us pure. You know, I remember I seen movies where, where women got raped or molested and they were going to the shower and they was trying to clean, they were trying to wash themselves off with all the guilt and, and, and the uncleanliness they were feeling as a result of being raped. And, and sometimes all the water is putting on them did not take it away. But you know what? I can tell you about some water that can wash you from all the shame that being molested, all the shame that going on in your past life. And that's the washing of water by the word of God. Jesus said you can be clean through the words that I speak unto you. Glory to God. And I'm declaring you. Uh, maybe, you know, you've done things or said things or feel in certain ways and you're still feeling that shame on your spirit. I declare you today being washed by the pure water of the word of God and washed by the pure blood of Jesus Christ. That no longer will you live in condemnation. No longer will you live in guilt. No longer will you, you live in un, a sense of unworthiness. You're going to begin to live that I am worthy, not because of my own works, but I'm worthy because of grace and mercy and the love of Jesus Christ that he's given me through his blood and the washing of water by the word of God. So I declare you clean. I declare you free. I declare you not guilty, glory to God, hallelujah, by the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Notice here, 
what God says in the book of Ephesians now. Chapter number one and verse number seven. Look what it says there. Ephesians 1, 7. You can read with me, you can read with me out loud. You have your Bibles open. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom, talking about in Christ, we have redemption through his blood. Through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. Glory to God. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In other words, he said, our sins are not forgiven the way some folks forgive you. Some people, they say they forgive, but as soon as they get mad, they bring it back up again. He said, no, we have redemption through his blood, and we have forgiveness of all of our sins according to the riches of his grace. That means God has given you grace according to his riches. That means God said, I'm not going to ever bring it up again. Hallelujah. Amen. And even if he God said, if you make me mad, glory to God, like some people do, mm -hmm. he says, I'm not going to still bring it up. I'm not going to never bring it up again. And he, and, he, and, he, and he puts that in his covenant in the book of Hebrews. Notice what the book of Hebrews says. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 12. And notice how God talks. Now he, he put this right. He put this, these terms in his covenant concerning how he would deal with us as far as our sins being forgiven. And notice what he says in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 12. Read with me out loud. God said, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities, I will remember no more. So there's nothing you or I can ever do that will cause God to pull back up our sins. He says, I won't even remember them. He said, even if I try to, bring, try to get them, he said, I have washed, wiped it out of my mind. Glory to God. I will never again bring up your sins. You say, well, Pastor... How come it keeps coming up all the time? How come it keeps coming back up all the time? You know why it keeps coming up? Because the devil kept old photographs. <laughs> Amen. I said the devil kept old photographs. The devil kept old videos. And the devil will continue to play. The devil will continue to play what you did. Because he kept the old films. But God says, I have forgiven you. I have released you. Glory to God. And he says, I remember them no more. So now our minds got to be renewed to what the word of God says, not what Satan is saying. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He's always going to accuse us. He's going to always bring up our past. But the book of Revelation said we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. What is our testimony? You're redeemed. Your testimony, God does not remember my sin. So Satan, if it's coming back up again, in my mind, is you doing that. I now have the mind of Christ. I'm renewing my mind now that all my sins, all my iniquities have been, re it's been wiped out. God remembers them no more. So anytime it comes back up again, in my mind or my imagination, it is old photographs and old videos that Satan you have kept. And sometimes people, unforgiving people, kept the old photographs. But, but now you no, longer, you no longer have to answer the people. You have been accepted by God. So people's opinion is just that, nothing but an opinion. Glory <laughs> to God, you perform before the audience of one, and that's Jesus. There's nobody else that you have to answer to but Jesus Christ. People's opinions are just that. They have no authority of your life. Uh, you'll find their, their, their words have no authority over you. Jesus Christ is the only one you perform for. And he says, I will never remember your sins. I paid the price for it. Glory to God. And that's a covenant. He's made with you. And that's why today, as we, as, we, as we go into Thanksgiving on tomorrow and beginning to, and really every day, really, but we talk about Thanksgiving that's coming to tomorrow. That's why we can begin to give God thanks. That's how we can begin to give God praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and that's why, look what, da you know, David made some mistakes in his life too, didn't he? David made a lot of mistakes, but David understood. Let me begin to give God thanks. So notice with me in the book of uh, uh, Psalms chapter 100 and listen to how they, you know, David made some mistakes. He, David made some bad mistakes. Amen. Being a king, he made some bad mistakes. So you were thinking David would live the rest of his life in total condemnation, but look at how David talked in Psalms 100 verse number 1. We, we can read verse 1 through 5 together. You ready? Let's read. He said, God says here, he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Verse 3, know ye not that he is God? 
it is he that has made you and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. You don't belong to the devil or people that's trying to put you down. It says, enter into his gates this morning with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Isn't that beautiful today? That means get rid of all the down, let go of all the depression, praise God, and you enter into God's presence as though sin never existed. Mm -hmm. Glory to God, because as far as God is concerned, it's been wiped out. There's no more remembrance of it. And he says here, enter into his gates with thanksgiving this morning and into his course of praise. And it says, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Thanking him for what, pastor? Thank him for his blood. Thank him for the new and living way he's provided for you. Glory to God. Amen. Through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank him now that you can come bold into the throne of grace and you can find that mercy. You can find that grace and that grace will help you in your time of need. It's lifting condemnation. It's lifting guilt. It's lifting all the things that the devil's having in your past. And God says right now, lift yourself back up again, praise God, and get back into praise and get back into thanksgiving because I am your God. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful today? And then he says in verse number five, it says, for the Lord is good. The devil is bad. People sometimes can be bad, but the Lord, he's good. Glory to God. And his what? Mercy. And his mercy is everlasting. It don't wear out. The devil says, oh, but you done did this five times. Look, his mercy is everlasting. It does not wear out. Glory to God. And his truth endures to all Generations, Isn't that beautiful? That means that what David experienced, even though David made some bad, some bad choices in his life too, we all have, but David said his mercy, hallelujah, endured for all generations. His, the, he's good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth, that means it's still, it's still good today. And that's why today, as we're all together, many of us right now, uh, I'm, you know, I'm from Vegas, but right now I've been in Phoenix all this week with my children and my grandchildren this week and taking care of some business here in Phoenix. Uh, uh, and we're here, and plus we're here with many of you in different cities uh, of Arizona, Las Vegas, Texas, praise God, Louisiana, hallelujah. Uh, I, I know many of you are uh, Africa, many of you from different places, praise God, are on here right now. But thank, thank what? We are here together in one accord. And we're going, to, we're going to read this last scripture, and it's going, to, it's going to show us what can happen when we move out of condemnation, out of guilt, and out of things we've gone through in our life, and we move into thanksgiving and praise. Hallelujah. Now look what it says here. Let's go with me to the book of uh, um, 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and verse number 13. 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and verse number 13. And we're going to read verse 13 and 14 in 2 Chronicles, okay? And we're going to begin to start seeing... What takes place where we can move out of the condemnation and the guilt and start freely praising God because of the blood of Jesus? Freely praising God because His water, His pure water, has washed us and we're forgiven. And we can give God thanks on this day and not only this day but for the rest of our lives. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 says, It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and with, in praising and thanking, in praising and thanking. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to praise Him. We're going to thank Him. We're going to praise Him. We're going to thank Him. Amen. And praising and thanking the Lord. Listen, now, when they lifted up their voice, sometimes the devil wants you to be silent. He wants you to sit still and, 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 and keep going through the depression. He says, no, they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good. The devil wants the ones to say that. The devil wants to say, he's a judge. He's going to get you. You're going to kill you. No, he's good. Hallelujah, he's a good God. For the Lord is good for his mercy endureth forever oh let me let me say, let me say that again i interrupted that um, let me read again i'm gonna show you the results of that it verse one verse 13 again it came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one which we are one right now 
to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted up their when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endures forever that then mm, they change from an unworthy prayer praise to praising God for he's good that then the house was filled with the cloud even the house of the Lord and guess where the house of God is right now your body is his house now glory to God the house was filled with the cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Can you see why Satan wants us to stay in condemnation and guilt? Can you see why he wants to keep us out of the throne of God? Can you see how come he wants to keep us in really praising God and worshiping God? Because he wants us to keep to not enter into the glory. He wants to keep us into that I, I'm not worthy moment. But no, when you begin to praise God, you begin to give God thanks, hallelujah, for he is good, his mercy endures forever, that all of a sudden you're gonna, you're gonna be like I was in that bathroom. The glory gonna fill the house. The glory gonna, the mist and the presence of God is gonna fill your life, fill your house, praise God, hallelujah. So I want you to say, I want you to pray this with me right now. Let's, let's, let's do a, a prayer to the Lord. You ready? Say, Heavenly Father, I am at your throne of grace and mercy. You are my help in time of need. Re just repeat it with me out loud. I have no guilt or condemnation or sin consciousness. Thank you for your body and blood which consecrated a new way for me to enter boldly into your presence. I am here this morning in your presence with a true heart and full assurance of faith. My heart is now sprinkled from an evil conscience and my body is washed with your pure water. Mm, isn't that beautiful? So my failures and my sins are forgiven according to the riches of your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for being merciful to my unrighteousness and not remembering my sins or my iniquities. Thank you, Lord, that the barrier between you and me is now passed. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, Lord, that from this day forward, I choose and I serve you with gladness. Hallelujah. I come before your presence with singing and praise this morning. For you are my Lord and you are my God. You made me, Father. I am your child. I am a sheep of your pasture. I give you thanks and praise. I'm thankful unto you. I bless your name. For Lord, you are good. And your mercy is everlasting. And your truth endures to all generations. Say to me now. Say, I join together with believers around the world. And we make one sound to be heard in praising God and thanking you. We lift up our voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and we praise you today. We give you thanks today, Father, and we give you praise for you are good. Your mercy endures forever. And we declare this morning that every person, every house of God, every church, and every person's individual home are filled this morning or this evening with the presence and the power of the glory of Almighty God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Do you receive that this morning? Right, so let's begin to worship God together. Just worship the Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you honor today, God, for you are good. Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures to all generations. Say it with me again. For Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. Your mercy and your truth endures to all generations, Lord. We worship you this morning, God. And, and we come into this Thanksgiving season. And we're thanking you, Lord, for your precious blood. We're thanking you, Lord, 
for your precious grace. We're thanking you, Lord, for your precious mercy. We're thanking you, Lord, for all that you've done in our lives. Thank you for our families, God. Thank you for our children, Father. Thank you for our job, Father. Thank you for our homes or wherever we live at, Father. Thank you for our cars. Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the body of Jesus that was broken for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we worship you, Jesus. We bless your name in the name of Jesus. You know, I just sensed in my spirit a few minutes ago as we do this. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And maybe uh, at the end tomorrow, we'll take a moment to break bread, meaning have communion together. And you may not have communion. You may say, our communion at the church. Well, you just may get some grape juice and some bread, something representing the body and the blood of Christ. Because tomorrow morning, as we, as, we, as we come into Thanksgiving together, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have communion in the morning. And we're going to enjoy giving God thanks together as the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We, come on, let's worship him for a moment. I've got about another minute. Let's just worship him, giving him thanks, give him thanksgiving for what he's done. Thank him that by his stripes you're healed. Hallelujah. He bore your sickness in his body, and by his stripes you're healed. Thank you, Lord, that I decree that every sickness and every disease and every pain that your people are going through right now, I declare by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and his body that was broken for us, God, I declare supernatural health, healing, and restoration in their bodies in the name of Jesus. Well, it's been a great day. Praise God. Again, uh, we praise God for you. We're on every morning here from uh, at 6.30 Las Vegas time, 7.30 Arizona time, and whatever time that you're in for your time zone. Uh, and so we're on every morning. I want to welcome you also by inviting you to become my to be my partner. Uh, today I want to thank you for all you that are my partners. I'm saying thank you for all you that are my partners and those that are becoming my partners. Uh, and you said, Pastor, what is a partner? Those are those number one that pray for me. I'm an apostle of God. I reach out to people both through through this medium, through Facebook, through uh, Ministry Training Institute, through uh, uh, consulting and mentoring pastors and leaders, both in business and in ministry. Uh, uh, we do it, uh, I teach leadership training. I do it both here and around the world. And so I want you to partner with me. And, uh, and, uh, and you that are partnered with, thank you for what you're doing. And others that, you, that want to partner with me, both in prayer and in finances. Paul told the Philippian church, he said, because of your financial partnership, I'm able to move forward in the things of God. And so he says, because of that, because you're meeting my, my needs financially, my God shall supply all your need. Uh, according to the glory of Christ. So when you partner with an apostle, you actually come into agreement and you're partnering with the anointing that's on his or her life. And not only that, but the Bible says that you are now partakers of that same grace. And so I'm speaking over your life right now. Now, there's a, there's a link at the top on Facebook. There's a link right there that you can literally uh, uh, click that link. It'll take you to a, a site where you can sow an offering there. Or I have my, my cash out. Uh, 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 cash uh, 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 is dollar sign apostle. I am. You can send it to your cash out. And I receive your seed. I receive your offering and your, and your covenant partnership seed on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on his behalf, as you're partnering with him and me in this, in this ministry, I declare supernatural favor, increase, and blessing on your life, on your family, on your ministry, your business if you have one. And for all that you do, I declare supernatural favor on your life in the name of Jesus. Well, it's been a great day. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a part of this. Share this with your friends. We're going to continue to increase our audience. Praise God. And until tomorrow... At this very same time, this is Apostle Alfred Craig saying, may God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.